Hi, in this video we will perform a manual migration of a Unix group to Active Directory leveraging Centrify. Like I said in the posting, most likely um, groups that are used for access or privileges will be deprecated because uh, uh, Centrify provides zones and role-based access controls. So that makes your life much easier from that perspective. No more using secondary groups for those purposes. And so, you know, I, just to show you in this particular environment here, what I have is a centrified system. And this system uh, is already joined to a zone called QA. Uh, the group that I'm interested in migrating is called um, uh, my app. So if I, if I, you know, I've actually looked at the uh, Etsy group file, here's the group. There's only one person as a member. Notice that, you know, my app is not a zone group, so it's not actually a Unix enabled group. Also, there is a file that has been granted access to uh, based on that group. So if I look at the file and if I look even at the numbering, it is going to have the local um, GID. So if I look at, uh, you know, LIN here, notice that it's, uh, you know, um, 5004. So the first thing I need to do uh, to do the migration is to basically copy the group name uh, or line number um, in Unix format into a file. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to go ahead and save my file. With that I can go to the zone that I want to do the particular import, right click Unix data and then I'm going to pick uh, import from Unix. I'm going to pick a group file and there's my groups file here. I'm going to follow the wizard, nothing to do here. I'm going to store it, the information in Active Directory and notice that it says that it has imported one group. Okay. Uh, what happens is that groups come into this pending import and it's not until I actually have reconciled the group that things are going to, um, you know, work. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, notice that it picked the, the UID GID. Um, and uh, if you look at members, uh, it hasn't reconciled this user here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick a candidate and it's actually Diana. This happens to be a local group that contains an Active Directory enabled group. Um, and then in status here, um, you know, there's no import candidate. So I'm gonna go ahead, there's uh, several things that I can do. I could create an AD group to do the mapping. I can extend an existing AD group. Or if I already did a good job with my naming convention, I can just do text uh, check status and notice that it picked that group automatically. So you have three options, okay? You can create a new AD group right away to do the mapping, uh, reuse an existing AD group, or if you already have done this, you can do that automatically. So in here, notice that it says it's ready for import. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, press accept. When I do that uh, and I go to the groups, you'll see that now there's a group in there. So it's called my app and whatnot. I'm interested in doing something unique here. I, I want to normalize or rationalize my um, Unix um, um, namespace. And I know that there may be a collision with this group. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick, uh, generate the GID from SID. This is gonna make the GID unique and um, it's gonna make sure that there's no collisions in the future. You don't need to do this. You can always just leave it as is and you know, no more changes. So now when, when we make changes, again, this is, you know, Centrify 101. Uh, when, you, when we make changes to Active Directory, um, not everything uh, gets right away, um, you know, propagated into the Unix systems because of performance. We do caching and typically there's a 15 minute delay because we don't want to wait 15 minutes. I'm just going to do the AD flush command. But if I do an AD query, group, my app, Let's see what happens. Oh, notice that it's already uh, in here. So, and this is one of the benefits of the latest versions of the agent. It's really uh, fast in picking up changes. So you don't need to use AD flush as frequently. However, now, if you look at the, the, the file that I showed you before, guess what? It belongs to uh, my app and my app is actually, um, has a different GID now. <clears throat> So what I need to do at this point is to reconcile both. And there's a utility called AD Fix ID, and it's under user share, centrify DC, um, bin, and it's called AD Fix ID. And what that does, and it goes out and identifies any conflicts that we have. So notice that in here is saying 
hey, I found a conflict, and it's uh, because this my app group locally conflicts with the one that we have in AD. So what what it can do is is that it goes and it um, you know uh, basically makes uh, recursive changes in, with the file system to do that. So I think that I, all we need to do is run it with the commit, and it'll um, you know of course I need need to elevate. Um, it'll actually go and um, you know recursively look at the file systems and uh, make the proper change to make sure that this file instead of having that um, you know uh, that different uh, um, GID will have a different one so notice that it says one file has changed and if I look at the file now um, you know uh, now it, it matches the GID of the group so if we look at uh, at the group, notice that now the group owner of, of this particular GID is the long GID rather than um, you know that that short one. So um, you know that actually helps a lot. Um, but I understand that there's a lot of organizations that may not want to do that. They may want to keep their own um, GID, and that's uh, perfectly normal. The last thing that I could do is remove the local group. And there's another tool that Centrify provides. It's called ADRM Local. So it's going to go and check. Okay, you know we only found one duplicated group, and it's going to be removed. So when we when we do it with the commit option, um, you know it's going to um, um, make the changes. So um, and, and there you go. So only one local group was deleted. If I run it again, notice that it's going to find zero. And now if I cat the Etsy group file and that group no longer exists and if I do an AD query group um, my app there's the group right there and I hope this helped um, ultimately when you have a big environment you will have a design and you will have an automated way to do this but this series is to illustrate how things works manually because it's much better to understand how things work manually before we move into automatic things. And I hope this video helps.